Hey guys, this is Brian from a Nintendo Game Point Plus, and today, Nintendo announced something. Because apparently January is just random drop news month. I don't know. That's how I felt this was. Granted, the news was really, really good, but still, January is officially Nintendo random drop news month. Trademarked. I have that trademark. I have that trademark. Y'all can't steal. <laughs> So today, Nintendo announced a brand new peripheral for Nintendo Switch. This is what's known as Nintendo Labo, or Nintendo Labo. I don't quite know how you're supposed to say it yet. I need to hear someone actually say it before I call it it. But for the sake of this, I'm going to call it Nintendo Labo because I like short vowel sounds. I, like, I like the long vowel sounds. I don't know. So anyways, Nintendo Labo is this new peripheral for Nintendo Switch made entirely out of cardboard and what happens is you the you the player create these little time these little for lack of a better word these little cardboard toys that interact with your nintendo switch in some way shape or form in some ways you'll be folding up a little toy car hex bug cross hybrid and putting the joy cons on the side and using the Nintendo Switch to move it around via the motion. In some cases, the one I actually was focusing on and really was interested in is you can even make this large cardboard piano, and what you do is you plug in the Joy-Con with the IR sensor on the bottom into the back, and Nintendo Switch plops in front, which is the screen you see, and when you actually press on the keyboard, it actually functions as a piano. And it... And I was like, wow, that's smart. And so you start to see more of how these different peripherals and different cardboard toys turn into different games, different uses, and different ways to interact. Nintendo markets this as a new, as a peripheral for kids or for kids at heart. And I can definitely see where they get this because even me, I am, I am 21. I'm clearly I'm clearly not the demographic for this, but I don't think Nintendo cares. I don't think I care. Actually, I know I don't. I know I don't care because this looks really cool. I think this is amazing. It's not just this throwaway idea. It's like, oh, hey, let's take the stuff we have with Switch and put it into these peripherals that you can build and you can learn how it works, which is something they also highlight. Not only can you learn how to build these things via the Switch, you can learn how these peripherals, different functions, how when you make this, when you make this piano, when you make this fishing rod, when you make this gigantic robot armor pack, we'll get to that in a minute, when you make this, here's how it works. Here's how this will function when you use it in this game. And I thought that was so cool i think it sparks creativity i think it i think it promotes really it promotes learning it's it's nintendo's answer to lego almost without being lego it's its own thing but it's so familiar because i've seen a lot lately kids building like little kids computers that they can build on their own or let or of course lego of course still popular you see all these great ways kids can interact and build different things, especially with technology. So I really like the look of this, and I really like even just the aesthetic and the look of the cardboard next to the Nintendo Switch. It really works. Of course, there are some issues that, there are some issues, but I definitely think there are a lot of positives to this. So I figure let's go over the good and bad of Nintendo Labo. Or is it Labo? Nintendo Label or Labo? There's your first issue. What is the name of this thing? Okay, so let's start with the positives of this. First positive, like I said, the cardboard aesthetic just, it's out there, but it's so cool. And I like that it's even customizable. Like, it, that's how I kind of see, oh, it's geared towards kids, because kids can, like, get their own markers or stickers, or you can actually buy, like, sticker packs Nintendo's going to sell, and you can decorate it and do your own thing, make it your own personal creation. And I love how even as a card, seeing this cardboard cutouts next to Nintendo Switch, it's, it 
fit so well together. I think it's because, you know, Nintendo, before they were into, you know, video games and stuff, they actually did produce toys. So I think when you hear Nintendo say, oh, this is this new toy, and this is how it looks, it's like, oh, okay, I I see this. It's It fits so well together, those two aesthetics. They're completely different, yet they just mesh together so well. Another thing that I liked about this is that it makes use of this, the right Joy-Con IR sensor. And I, when I first heard of this thing, to those of you who don't know, this little sensor is to, it, it senses like the distance, like from your hand, it can tell what shape your hand is in, it can, it can do all, th all kinds of th things because it's an IR, but when I first saw it, I was like, okay, yeah, great job, Nintendo. I thought this was going to be wasted. I thought we were never going to see this thing used ever again. No, not only do they use it, it's used in a really good way. It's not, it doesn't seem like, oh, we need to use this IR sensor. Let's just use some cardboard over here. No, it's we, hey, here's an idea. Let's incorporate it with this switch. Let's incorporate it to see how well it can work. And it works really well. And I think that, I think this can take off a little, I think this can take off. A third thing that I like is I like how the games in it show you how these peripherals work and how even though they're made of cardboard, it shows you, oh, this is how, what the cardboard is and how we use this IR sensor, how we can make it interact. So yes, it's cardboard. Yes, it is cardboard string and tape but this is how they function together and this is how the switch works so it can see this so it can see what you're doing and it can sense what is going on so it transmits what's going on in the game that is great i did not even think of that i would never thought of this idea at all and nintendo turned it into something really good Something else that I real something else that I liked, and this is like the pure Nintendo fan, the, the, the nerd Nintendo fan in me, is that the giant robot game, the one that has this huge cardboard backpack. You have this cardboard backpack strapped on, strings coming down, like on your feet. Like you string something on your feet so you can move this robot on the screen around so you can punch so you can break buildings that is actually a game seen way back on the wii u at least as a tech demo during e3 called project giant robot unfortunately we didn't know how it was going to be incorporated or how else nintendo could use it and so it was kind of put on back burner for a while and we thought oh well we don't know what's going to happen anymore. Maybe it's dead in the water. No, they incorporate it in this really cool way. And I will and is it just me or did I think the most coolest part was seeing the cardboard cut out cardboard backpack and how verse it's so weird that you can create this. And I think that's what really sparked it is like, "Oh, I can make this. I can do this, and I made it. And I and I love how that's kind of the idea that you're getting into kids' heads, into anyone's heads, that I'm doing this, I made it. I am the reason this robot exists. Well, that and developers of game. But I feel that this sparks creativity so much, and that's the best part of this thing. It sparks so much creativity, and that is just the ultimate best part. And I love how it's customizable. I love how you can give it your own personal style. You can make your own little backpack thing, but give it flame stickers. I don't give it flame stickers. I don't think that's the best course of action, but if you want to, go ahead. You give flame stickers and it's yours. It's your personal thing. You made it your own. <laughs> okay, that was crazy. That was crazy. Uh, I think one more legit positive that I get out of this is that it's generated towards kids, but it's not childish. Like, it, it's kind of like a Disney film, <laughs> in a way. You know, it's it's generated towards kids, but it's not childish. It's not, hey, kids, look at these. You can make your own cardboard cutouts and 
do all this paper craft style. Yippee. No, it's like, hey, kids, this is a thing you can create on your own. And this is how it works. And we're going to have, and so it doesn't feel like it's, it doesn't feel like it's only for kids. It doesn't feel like it's made just for kids. It's not like something you'd see, oh, this is a special Nick Jr. special. No, it's something, it's geared towards kids, but clearly anyone can have fun with it. And that's something that I think is great for any, for any video game company to do is make something that appeals to everyone. And so those are the positives. But like I said, there are some setbacks that I feel are in it. And some of these I feel are nitpicky to me. Some of these are kind of feel are legitimate criticisms. So let's start going on the negative train. Right, one legit problem that I have with this. Uh, the price point, kind of the price point, because we don't know everything about it. And the price point is like the activity pack. This is the one that comes with everything. It comes with like five different types of toy cons, which, okay, I should side tangent. The name toy con is brilliant. It comes with the little five, comes with five different activities in it. They're like little small mini game type ish. That's going to be like $69.99. And then we have the one with the giant robot with the kid with the giant robot pack. That's like seventy nine ninety nine, and I'm like, okay, yeah. So that the price point is iffy to me. It makes sense given what's in the pack, because it's not just cardboard. It's also like strings. Uh, you got little fasteners to help the string slide through in some games. You have like some tape. So I think even tape in some cases, because you know they need like ref some reflective tape. I believe I, I haven't. I need to reread what's in the packs, but. I can see the price points on why they price them that way, not to mention it also includes the game itself, the games that you use. So I see why they price these, but I also think, yeah, maybe it's just me saying, like, maybe it's just me being cheapish for like a cheapo, I don't know, but I think maybe, maybe if it was like 10 ish bucks down. But then again, I am not a marketing agent. I am a nerd on YouTube. So take what I will take with I take what I say with a grain of salt. That's all I can say. Another issue, and this is more with the giant robot pack. Jeez, I'm, I'm gonna have just have so much fun saying that giant robot cardboard backpack. And here's the, but the legit issue I find is that it costs more. I know why it costs more, because obviously. No duh. It's a giant cardboard robot backpack. You cannot stop me from saying that. Uh, it, the thing is, though, it's only that. And that's $79.99. Granted, of course, it's bigger than the smaller activities, but it's only that, and it's only that game. So I feel like that's going to be the... What I want to say, the more Mario S game in sense, in the sense that it's an actual adventure and you're building this to go on an adventure because the game is an adventure, while the other ones are more interactive and you can do it over and over and it's like different experiences. I feel like this is only a solo game and I feel like, yeah, granted it's bigger in the sense, but I do feel like, I don't know, it's more and there's only one thing. Well, this one's less and it has like tons of things in it. And, so, and tons of different things you can do. So I the variety pack has more variety in my mind. So I feel like people are going to be more geared towards that. And I, I kind of feel like people, because of the price point and because it's only one thing, people will be more geared to the variety pack and because it is cheaper than that. And so I'm not saying it'll do bad, but I am saying that it might not get as much buzz. Of course, if I'm proven wrong, hey, I, I've been wrong before. I once predicted, like, I, I honestly predicted Nintendo NX. I honestly thought that Circle Controller was a real thing when the NX was out. So, again, take with what I, what I say with the grain of salt. I think what another issue is, it while I do see, while I did say it does appeal to both people, it does appeal to both kids and adults, and it's easy to do that, I do think it, the creative pack... That creation thing, that's a little more on the children's side to me. 
it like oh you can customize and color it and make it your own that is a little bit on the kiddier side but then again it's cran if you don't want to do it don't do it that that's that's maybe that's more of a nitpick and i don't see some it, yeah that's pretty much a nitpick a um, legit issue, now this is something I read, I don't know this, because for all I know, they could have done, because I don't know everything about it, but from what I heard, they actually did have some people actually test this product, and actually, they had some actual reviewers go out, actually play with it around. They said that average time to build, like, the small bug-type robot cars, it was, like, 15 minutes, and then that piano thing, the first thing you see in the trailer, that took apparently that took two hours to build i don't think that's an appropriate time scale that's a bit of a that's a leap of time but i hope it doesn't take that long i don't think it'll take that long maybe because obviously maybe it's a controlled setting maybe it's like on average because or maybe it's just a time they have to give because you never know I hope it doesn't go that time length because I don't know how long, I don't know if it would be good to for something like that to take that long to build. I don't imagine it looks like it takes that long, but then again, I'm not like some Lego expert and maybe this is like an average time people take even to build Lego sets. I don't know because I feel like that's where the inspiration comes from. So maybe it is the appropriate time, but even still, I think that is a bit of a gap in time like something takes 15 minutes and something takes two hours so i'm like Ugh! i'm not i'm not liking that time scale in between so yeah but yeah so that's kind of the issues i have but overall i think it's that's kind of it but that's kind of it with the issues in my mind because i think but and i think the product itself has so much in it that's so positive about it and i think that's and I think that's what's making me see like these issues a little more small is that the good kind of outweighs the negative in a way. I mean, the negative is still there and it is legit. There are some legit negatives. Maybe I didn't see anything. Maybe there's something I didn't see that you saw. Maybe something I saw you didn't see. I don't know. But I think there are a lot of good positives in this product and some, some worries, but they have some time to iron on out. That's what I said. So overall, I think, I heard a comparison saying, oh, you know, this could be the real Wii Sports of the Switch. Not like 1-2 Switch, which we thought would be the Wii Sports of the Switch. No, I think 1-2 Switch is still the Wii Sports of the Switch, in my own personal opinion. Because I think what this is, is the Wii Fit of the Switch. I think this is the same, because if you think about it, these are wacky peripherals. Like, things you wouldn't even think would fit with the game. Like, things that don't even look like what? Like a cardboard house. Uh, that looks like a bathroom. The Wii Fit, that looks like a bathroom scale. This guy's making fishing rod out of cardboard. Like, like what is he wearing on his back? I, it looks weird, but I feel like when you actually start using it and start playing it with different games, when you start interacting it, interacting with the different types of uh, the ways you can use it when you learn how it works when you really get into it I think this could be a really good I think this is a new kind of franchise Nintendo has in the sense of kind of like how we fit and how those Wii games are they offer different things and I think like I said this is like the Wii fit of Nintendo Switch this is that really weird wacky peripheral nobody thinks it's gonna work then when so then it starts going and i think it's gonna start getting a little momentum especially with how creative it is it isn't and unlike we we fit it isn't just oh this thing you stand on but with really fun interesting games it's oh hey this is the thing you create and interact with interact with it in different ways and use it in different and you can even make up your own stuff because i like I kind of saw it wasn't really open-ended almost like there was different ways to do it so I think Nintendo you did something really great
I still think you should give it, a, still should have said in the in the trailer, is it Labo or Labo? Nintendo, just tell me what it is. Is it Labo? Is it Labo? Labo, Labo? I don't care, but it still looks cool. So, yeah. Nintendo, whatever it's called. Nintendo, whatever it's called. I think you have a good ch I think it has a really good chance. And I think it's really going to work out for Nintendo. I think this is something that I hope to see more of. I hope it doesn't just stop at, like, these two activity packs. I hope it really does take off. Because I think this is... I think Nintendo hit a really good market here. I think it's something that we haven't really seen before, but when we see it now, I think it really works. So, good job Nintendo. I think you did. I think you hit a little I think you hit a little gold mine here. So, yeah, those were my little thoughts of Nintendo place name here. Just place the name here. I'm going to call it Nintendo Nintendo Labo. I'm calling it Labo. I'm sticking with Labo. That's my thoughts on Nintendo Labo. What are your thoughts on it? What did you like? What did you dislike? Do you think it's going to sell well? Do you think Nintendo's just going to forget about it? Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen? Let me let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And also link to the actual blog if you want to see some other stuff. Because I made a... I recently made, of course, a new... What was it? A new, yeah, I made a new top 10 recently. I hope you guys enjoy it. I also did... Uh, update due to the Nintendo Direct Mini. Uh, when that happened last week, you can see my thoughts on it there. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. There will be more where this came from.